Today, <laughs> I'm reviewing a very large tower speaker. Uh, it's called the Triangle Borea BRO8. Say that three times quickly. Let's just call it the Borea from now on, okay? I'm going to call it the Borea. So anyway, it's a big speaker. Three-way with a one-inch silk dome tweeter, a uh, six and a quarter inch cellulose, aka paper, mid-range driver, and then two six and a half inch fiberglass woofers. Below the woofer is a port, a round port. And below that is the bottom of the speaker. No, below that is a plinth base. So the, the bottom of the speaker uh, doesn't actually directly contact your floor. The speaker sits on that plate, uh, let's say plinth platform, and then that sits on your floor. So it's very uh, neat and tidy. My review samples are white. I can't say it's a dazzling finish. It's white vinyl. Kind of looks a lot like the Q Kef 550 I reviewed not so long ago in terms of its finish and basically ba basic box type design. Nothing fancy going on here. They're functional looking. They're, you know, they're not trying to be something they're not, which I, I respect. Oh, the price. The price for the Borea is $13.99 a pair, which is, I, I was kind of surprised. It's a lot of speaker for the money. I would have guessed a few hundred dollars more than that. So I was pleased to see that it's that price, $1,400 a pair. There's also two small bookshelf speakers for $450 and $550, and a center channel speaker, which is $350. So uh, round back, there is a set of single uh, but nicely done uh, binding posts. No, no buy wire, just single posts. Um, the cabinet seems heavily braced. It's a very solid feeling cabinet. And um, setup was a snap, nothing to it. Plopped them down in the usual positions for a speaker of that type. Sounded great. Tweaked a little bit with toe in here and there. And uh, I was good to go. Oh, uh, I did forget to mention that that silk dome tweeter is set into a very shallow horn, or you could also call it a waveguide. Uh, and impedance, well impedance is called 8 ohms, but triangle also specifies that it goes down to 3 ohms. 3 ohms, that's getting down there, right? So you should use this with uh, receivers or more likely integrated amps or power amps that can handle low impedance loads. For this review, I used two different ones at different times. I used the Denon PMA600NE. It's only 399 bucks, but does easily drive 4 ohm loads. Sound really good. But I also stepped up and put it in my main system where it was being driven by a Pass Labs XA25 power amp. So, but mostly I listened with the Denon. And I was very pleased with the sound. It's a, uh, the Borea is on the warmish side of neutral. I would say it likes to uh, throw its weight around. It's a very powerful sounding speaker. Uh, I think the bass, even though these speakers were well out into the room, a good mm, four feet away from the walls, was really strong. Uh, you know, it's, it's a French company. Triangle is, is based in France. The speaker is designed in France, made in China. Sorry guys, there's no way you can make a speaker with all this stuff in it and make it in France for 1400 bucks. So they make them in China, but it, the drivers are all proprietary uh, triangle designs. In other words, designed by triangle, not off the shelf drivers. Um, oh, it, so my samples were white uh, vinyl, but they also are available in black and also in a wood finish, I think is walnut. I've heard that the walnut is actually pretty nice looking. For one reason or other, I found myself playing a lot of jazz on this speaker. And uh, in terms of communicating rhythm, or as we used to call it, rhythm in pace, and toe tapping and head bopping, that kind of rhythm, it does really, really well. It's a very engaging sounding speaker. Now I would say with uh, poor recordings or harsh recordings or bright recordings, it lets you know that they're harsh or bright or aggressive. That's, that much was clear. Uh, but otherwise, I would say that the balance is pretty, pretty good, but leaning towards the bassier side of neutral. 
Uh, in a way, it, it reminded me of the Polk Legend 200 speaker I reviewed recently. It was also on the warmer side of neutral, but this, but that was a bookshelf speaker, and that speaker was uh, $17.99 a pair, so it's more expensive, but didn't have the the air moving capabilities of the Borea. Borea is a lot, much larger speaker, so naturally we, we get to back to where I started here is that size matters whereas we used to say there's no substitute for cubic inches I was referring to car engines but it applies in some vague way to speakers that bigger speakers well-designed bigger speakers move more air with more gusto than smaller speakers do by the way so it, it is fourteen hundred dollars a pair and if that's way out of your reach, I do have a much less expensive speaker that has some of those qualities, and it's the JBL uh, Stage A170 Tower speakers that list for $500 a pair, but easily findable for $400 a pair. And I'm not in any way suggesting that the JBL is as good as the, the Borea, but the JBL has that kind of serious air moving capability in a much skinnier not as tall uh, tower but it's it has it has some power behind it so that's for four hundred dollars if, if if your budget is tight can't stretch to fourteen hundred dollars the stage a170 is an easy recommend you know speaking of bass i played um a tribe called quest their album with the with one of my favorite titles of all time. It's called The Low End Theory. It's a it's a rap record, hip hop record from, I don't know, 25 years ago or so. But it's a really good recording, really good. And the bass, speaking of The Low End Theory, is very, uh, there's a lot of acoustic bass. There's all kinds of different types of bass on the record. Maybe that's why they called it The Low End Theory. But in any case, the uh, the Borea was, was communicating those low-end uh, <laughs> power, uh, gusto, uh, weight, uh, feel it in your chest, feel it in your gut kind of power that you would want if you're into that kind of music. It's not my main addition in terms of musical taste, but it's certainly, uh, I really like this album. Years ago somebody turned me on to it, and I don't mention it enough in these reviews, but it's a terrific album great for testing uh, <laughs> speakers' bass capabilities. Like I was saying before, the, the board has an ability to communicate uh, rhythm and tension in rhythm and forward motion in rhythm. And one of the records I played that brought that to light was this one here, Don Shirley. And, you know, this Don Shirley is the guy, is the piano player that the Green Book, the movie The Green Book, is, is taking license with his story but in any case this is the real green book guy and this is a trio most piano trio groups are piano bass and drums but this is not this is piano bass and cello and it's the interplay between the cello and the bass that gives it this unusual kind of pulse to the to their to their music uh, this is a this record is a very uneven album. It's not that hard to find, um, but I'm not recommending the whole album. But the the title song "Water Boy" is really spectacular. I wish the whole record was as good as that. But that track, which you can hear streamed on Tidal and Spotify, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is well worth checking out. And if you're not into jazz, this is the kind of tune, at least, that might. It might get to you. Might say, "Ah, oh, yeah, I kind of get what the jazz thing's about." So, look for that. So this record, Black Uhuru's "The Dub Factor." Well, it is what it sounds like it's going to be. But this record again was showed that this speaker. It wasn't just a matter of quantity of bass, but the uh, the texture of it, the, the again the drive of it, but that kind of palpable thing. But I had, I had played this album when I reviewed the Klipsch RP5000F a few months ago. That speaker, which is less expensive than, than the Borea, it's uh, I think $750 a pair, um, had more uh, energy to it. It's a higher energy, more dynamically alive speaker, uh, not as 
refined as the triangle speaker, not as, not as refined as the Borea, but it's 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 interesting. If you if you if you play music loud and you and you want to have that uh, let's say rock feeling, you know, of very high energy, and you like to crank it up, uh, I think the the Kef would be. I'm sorry, the Eclipse would be a better way to spend your dollars. You know, I'm circling around here because I'm trying to give you a, a picture of what's out there in, in tower speakers at various price ranges from the JBL uh, Stage A170 at $500 a pair list to the Kef and the Klipsch and now the Borea. They're all good. They all do different things. Um, I would say if I had to pick one, if I if I didn't know who the buyer was and what they were looking for and which was the most, let's say, uh, even in its in its abilities, I would lean towards the Kef, the Q550, uh, which is I th I can't remember all these prices on the top of my head, but I think it's twelve hundred dollars a pair. Pretty sure it is, and that one. So it's about the same price as the Borea. It's a little more refined, but the Borea just had that 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 communicating uh, energy, rhythm, pace, interaction of musicians. It did that really, really well. So they're all different, and I wish you could go and hear them for yourself rather than having me tell you what they sound like. But unfortunately, in 2019, that's virtually impossible. So you're kind of stuck with me and other people who review speakers for a living. It's a really nice speaker. As you can tell, I'm pretty enthusiastic about it uh, and I'm looking forward to reviewing more triangle speakers down the road. I did the, the Titus Easy bookshelf speaker a few months ago, really liked it. That led to this one and uh, I will do higher end models in the next, probably early in 2020. My name's Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and it has a habit of coming up six or seven days a week right now. Check it out. Um, check out the playlists. I have playlists for speaker reviews, for headphone reviews, for music reviews. I have interviews with industry luminaries. I have playlists of photo shows of your pictures of your systems, you audiophiliac viewer systems. There's four um, slideshows up there right now. There's another one coming up soon. So lots of cool pictures to see. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. You can follow me on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. And you can also check out the Patreon at P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Audiophiliac. See you again real soon.